When my twins were seven, they started attending Marcus. They'd been struggling at their first general education school. Marcus robbed them of the childhood they were supposed to restore. Marcus is a school that is designed to serve students with disabilities, especially those with emotional and behavioral needs. My daughter found the confidence to come forward, and at eight years old, she described to me being held like a coat on a coat hanger. That is what started my investigation into what was actually going on at that school. The students at Marcus that we were working with were being subject to restraint and seclusion. It was systemic, and it was causing trauma. There were a number of practices that you couldn't even imagine where they would pin the children to a wall, where they would pin them on the floor. My daughter was a very slim child, and yet she had three or four adults holding an eight-year-old down. They were held in such a way that they were not able to breathe, and they were told that if they couldn't breathe, that they should calm down. Children can be injured from these kinds of practices, and they can die, especially prone restraints. When my daughter was in seclusion in the small support room, it was the size of a closet. There's nothing in there but a mattress. There's no lighting at all. They would use a gymnastic gym mat to barricade my child inside until she passed out or fell asleep or was too exhausted to fight more. There's no academic support that this is the way in which people learn the best. It's actually the academic support says precisely the opposite, that people learn best in an environment in which they feel supported. So in 2018, we were compelled to bring the lawsuit against both the county and the state. The Marcus lawsuit was brought by four very courageous students and their parents. We partnered with Sullivan and Cromwell, and that law firm was dedicated to bringing this case forward. In addition, public counsel actually had a whole team that they put to bringing this case forward. When I started working out with these families, I learned about really the sheer magnitude of the harm that these students had faced and the ways that these parents were truly fierce advocates for their children. They recognized that by fighting for their children, they're fighting for all special needs kids in these schools. Working with these plaintiffs was just a great feeling. You were just amazed that they were brave enough to come forward. This would not have happened without public counsel. I wouldn't have had the funds, the resources, the time, the emotional stamina to do this without them. The primary theory that we were proceeding under was that California law requires that every child be given a free and appropriate public education. And there's a lot of protections that are built into that, like being free of restraints and seclusion, except in emergency situations where there is a danger to someone else. One child, one of our plaintiffs, was restrained five different times in two days. This had nothing to do with emergencies. It had everything to do with punishment. The settlement was hard fought. Our clients were incredibly involved. It was really empowering as a parent to feel like I could address very specific items on the settlement that my children experienced, but that I know other children experienced. And my hope would be that it can be considered the standard that can be streamlined through other schools. The settlement includes accountability. It also includes providing training in PBIS, Positive Behavior Interventions and Support, to staff at Marcus. And it also empowers parents with information about restraint and seclusion and how that should not be used except for in an emergency situation. Calling the families to let them know that we had finally reached a settlement was one of the most exciting things I could do because they'd been waiting so long for this. It's been a really positive experience despite why we're all here. It let my children see me fight relentlessly for the past eight years. I fought with the love of a mother because we don't often as parents get an opportunity to have a voice but this is the one time I got to have a voice and I wouldn't have had it without public counsel.